writers in Paris. For centuries Paris has been the home and frequently the subject matter of the most important novelists, poets, and playwrights in French literature, including Molière, Voltaire, Balzac, Victor Hugo, and Zola and Proust. Paris also was home to major expatriate writers from around the world, including Henry James, Ivan Turgenev, Oscar Wilde, Ernest Hemingway, James Joyce, Leopold Sanger, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, Milan Kundera, and Henry Miller. Few of the writers of Paris were actually born in Paris. They were attracted to the city first because of its university, then because it was the center of the French publishing industry, home of the major French newspapers and journals of its important literary salons, and the company of the other writers, poets, and artists. A literary emperor in Lutetia, 4th century. Before Paris was Paris, while it was still Lutetia, a middle-sized provincial town of the Roman Empire, it was the home of an important writer and philosopher, the Roman Emperor Julian. The nephew of the Emperor Constantine, he arrived in Lutetia in February 358 at the age of 25 as commander of the Roman armies in Gaul. He was raised to the title of emperor by his soldiers in 360, and thereafter spent his summers on military campaigns in different parts of the empire, and his winters in Paris, in the Roman governor's palace on the Isle de la Cite, where the conciergerie is located today. His writings were mostly philosophical, largely criticism of the new religion of Christianity, which had recently appeared in Gaul, but he also wrote about nature, geography, and his philosophy of life. He was killed in battle against the Persians in 363, and later was given the posthumous title of Julian the Apostate by the Catholic Church. The Middle Ages, Middle Ages, 16th century Rabelais and Ronsard. The most prominent Paris novelist of the period was Francois Rabelais, 1494-1553, best known for his novel Gargantua and Pantagruel which gave the word gargantuan to the English language. He was admired by King Francis I, who protected him while he was alive, but after the king's death, Rabelais and his works were condemned by the University of Paris and the Parliament of Paris, and he only survived because of the protection of high figures at court. He spent much of his life far from the city, but died in Paris. The most prominent poet was Pierre de Ronsard, 1524-1585, from an aristocratic family of the Vendome region. He settled in the Latin Quarter, studied briefly at the College of Navarre, then became a page to the Dauphin, the eldest son of Francis I. His first poem was published in 1547 by one of the many small publishing houses that had appeared around the university. He formed a literary circle with Joachim du Bellay and a group of other poets, and published a series of books of poetry on love and romance and a volume of erotic poems. The latter volume, Les Falastries, caused a scandal, and the Parliament of Paris ordered that all the copies be burned. Despite this, or because of this, Ronsard was a favorite of the court during the reigns of Henry Roman II, Francis Roman II, Charles Roman IX, and Henry Roman III. He gave poetry writing lessons to Charles Roman IX. However, by 1574, and the reign of Henry Roman III, as the wars of religion began, his poetry was less in royal favor. He continued to write peacefully within the College de Boncourt, attached to the College de Navarre, until his last days. Many of his poems had Paris settings. One poem from Sonnets Poor Helene was set in the new Tuileries Gardens, created by Catherine de Medici. Quand je pense si jour ou prise d'une fontaine. Dans le jardin royal ravi de ta douceur. Amerti de couvre les secrets de mon cœur. Et de combien de mox je avise mon aim plain. When I think of that day when, near a fountain in the royal garden, enchanted by your gentleness, love revealed to you the secrets of my heart, and how much pain had filled my soul. A soul, a soul, a soul, a soul, a soul, all, all, all. Seventeenth century, the Academie Francaise. Of the prominent French writers of the century, 
Molière, the Marquise de Savigny, La Rochefoucauld, and Charles Perrault were all born in Paris. Pierre Cornille was from Normandy, Descartes from the Touraine, Jean Racine, and La Fontaine from Champagne. They were all drawn to Paris by the publishing houses, theatres, and literary salons of the city. The first literary academy, the Académie Francaise, was formally by Cardinal Richelieu on January 27, 1635, to honor, but also to exert control over the literary figures of France. Writers knew that any published word critical of the king or court would lead their exile from Paris. This happened to one of the founding members of the Academy, Roger de Bussy Rabutin, who in 1660 wrote a scandalous satirical novel about life at the court of Louis Roman XIV, which was circulated privately to amuse his friends. Although it was never published, he was banished from Paris to his chateau in Burgundy. 18th century Of the great French writers of the 18th century, the two most famous, Voltaire and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, spent most of their careers far from Paris, either in exile or under strict censorship. Early in his career, Voltaire had been welcomed to the Salon of Madame Pompadour and had been granted a government pension, which he did not touch for twelve years. The scholar and co-author of the first encyclopedia, de Lambert had been provided an apartment in the Louvre, and Rousseau had been fated and welcomed to the homes of the nobility. But, under Louis Roman XVI, the royal attitudes changed. Voltaire very rarely visited Paris between 1760 and his death in 1784. Rousseau was allowed to return to Paris from exile only on the condition that he not publish any of his work. Nonetheless, the writing of both men was widely read, usually in clandestine editions, and shaped the ideas that led to the revolution. In the first half of the 18th century, eminent French writers were invited to become members of the Académie Francaise, but the Academy in practice served largely to glorify the royal family and to keep writers under gentle control, rather to stimulate innovation in literature. Neither Rousseau nor Voltaire were chosen. Only one of the great philosophers of the Enlightenment, Montesquieu, was elected a member. His 1748 book, The Spirit of the Laws, proposing a separation of powers between the executive, legislature, and courts, had an enormous impact on political thinking outside France, especially in England and the United States. Despite censorship and restrictions, Paris was the leading book publishing center of Europe and provided books not only to France, but exported them to all the courts and aristocracies of Europe, where French was widely spoken. The plays of Voltaire, Pierre Beaumarchais and Pierre de Marivaux, the novels of Chauderlos, de Laclos, Les Liaisons Dangerouses, and Toyne Francois Provost Men on Lescout, and the poetry of Jacques de Lille and Evariste de Parny were read in all the major cities of the continent, as far away as St. Petersburg. An important feature of the Paris literary world was the literary salon, where wives of the nobility invited their friends to their homes to hear readings of new books and to discuss literature, and, later in the century, politics. The first famous Paris salon of the 18th century was that of Madame de Lambert in her townhouse on Rue Richelieu in 1710, followed by those of Madame's de Tenson, Geoffrin du Defand, Depinay, Helvetius, and Necker. The revolution brought an abrupt end to the literary salons, as the aristocrats were executed or forced into exile, and some of the most promising writers, including the poet André Chenier, went to the guillotine. The period of the French Revolution 1789-1799 was not a good time for French literature. The most important poet, André Chenier, was sent to the guillotine during the Reign of Terror. His poems did not become well known until after the Revolution. The Marquis de Sade had been imprisoned even before the Revolution for his scandalous writing. He was released during the French Directory, but under Napoleon he was sent to an insane asylum where he died. Under Napoleon 1799-1815, freedom of the press had been proclaimed at the beginning of the Revolution, but had quickly disappeared during the Reign of Terror and was not restored by the succeeding governments or by Napoleon. In 1809, Napoleon told his Council of State 
the printing presses are an arsenal and should not be put at the disposition of anyone. The right to publish is not a natural right. Printing as a form of instruction is a public function, and therefore the state can prevent it. Supervision of the press was the responsibility of the Ministry of the Police, which had separate bureaus to oversee newspapers, plays, publishers and printers, and bookstores. The Prefecture of Police had its own bureau, which also kept an eye on printers, bookstores and newspapers. All books published had to be approved by the censors, and between 1800 and 1810 160 titles were banned and seized by the police. The number of bookstores in Paris dropped from 340 in 1789 to 302 in 1812. In 1811 the number of publishing houses was limited by law to no more than 80, almost all in the neighborhood around the university. Censorship of newspapers and magazines was even stricter. In 1800 Napoleon closed down 60 political newspapers, leaving just 13. In February 1811, he decided that this was still too many and reduced the number to just eight newspapers, almost supporting him. One relatively independent paper, the Journal de l'Empire continued to exist and by 1812 was the most popular newspaper, with 32,000 subscriptions. Newspapers were also heavily taxed, and subscriptions were expensive. An annual subscription cost about 56 francs in 1814. Because of the high cost of newspapers, many Parisians went to cabinets literaires or reading salons, which numbered about 150. For a subscription of about 6 francs a month, readers could find a selection of newspapers, plus billiards, cards or chess games. Some salons displayed caricatures of the leading figures of the day. The Restoration 1815-1830 The dominant literary movement in Paris was Romanticism, and the most prominent romantic was Francois-René de Chateaubriand, an essayist and diplomat. He began the Restoration as a committed defender of the Catholic faith and royalist, but gradually moved into the liberal opposition and became a fervent supporter of freedom of speech. The prominent romantics of the time included the poet and politician Alphonse de Lamartine, Gerard de Nerval, Alfred de Musset, Theophile Gautier, and Prosper Merimi. Despite limitations on press freedom, the Restoration was an extraordinary rich period for French literature. Paris editors published the first works of some of France's most famous writers. Honor de Balzac moved to Paris in 1814, studied at the University of Paris, wrote his first play in 1820, and published his first novel, Les Trons, in 1829. Alexandre Dumas moved to Paris in 1822 and found a position working for the future king, Louis Philippe, at the Palais Royal. In 1829, at the age of 27, he published his first play, Henry Roman III and His Corpse. Stendhal, a pioneer of literary realism, published his first novel, The Red and the Black, in 1830. The young Victor Hugo declared that he wanted to be Chateaubriand or nothing. His first book of poems, published in 1822 when he was 20 years old, earned him a royal prize from Louis Roman XVIII. His second book of poems in 1826 established him as one of France's leading poets. He wrote his first plays, Cromwell and Hernani, in 1827 and 1830, and his first short novel, The Last Days of a Condemned Man, in 1829. The premiere of the ultra-romantic Hernani C. Theatre section below caused a riot in the audience. The July Monarchy, 1830-1848 Many of the greatest and most popular works of French literature were written and published in Paris during the July Monarchy. Victor Hugo published four volumes of poetry, and in 1831 published Notre Dame de Paris, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which was quickly translated into English and other European languages. The novel led to the restoration of the cathedral and other medieval monuments in Paris. In 1841, Louis Philippe made Hugo a peer of France, a ceremonial position, with a seat in the upper house of the French Parliament. Hugo spoke out against the death penalty and for freedom of speech. 
while living in his house on the place royal now place des Vosges, he began working on his next novel, Les Miserables. Frank or René de Chateaubriand refused to swear allegiance to Louis Philip, and instead secluded himself in his apartment at 120 Rue du Bac and wrote his most famous work, Memoirs d'Autry Tom, which was not published until after his death. He died in Paris on 4 July 1848, during the French Revolution of 1848. After writing several novels, in 1832 Honor de Balzac conceived the idea of a series of books that would paint a panoramic portrait of all aspects of society eventually called La Comédie Humaine. He declared to his sister, I am about to become a genius. He published Eugenie Grandet, his first bestseller, in 1833, followed by Le Pierre Goriot in 1835, the two volume Illusions Perdues in 1843, Splendors at Miser's Des Courtesanes in 1847, Le Cousin Pons 18. In each of the novels, Paris is the setting and a major participant. During the July Monarchy, the highly prolific Alexander Dumas published The Three Musketeers, 1844, twenty years after 1845, The Vicomte de Bragelon, 1847, The Count of Monte Cristo, 1845-1846, La Réunie Margot, 1845, La Dame de Montsoreau, 1840. Stendhal published his first major novel, Le Rouge at Lenoir, in 1830, and his second, La Chartreuse de Parme, in 1839. Other major Paris writers of the July monarchy included George Sand. The poet Charles Baudelaire, born in Paris, published his first works, Essays of Art Criticism. The Second Republic and Second Empire, 1848-1870. The most famous Paris writer of the Second Empire, Victor Hugo, spent only a few days in the city during the course of the empire. He was exiled shortly after Napoleon Roman III seized power in 1852, and he did not return until after the fall of Napoleon Roman III. The emperor stated publicly that Hugo could return whenever he wanted, but Hugo refused on a matter of principle, and while in exile wrote books and articles ridiculing and denouncing Napoleon Roman III. His novel Les Miserables was published in Paris in April and May 1862, and was a huge popular success, though it was criticized by Gustave Flaubert, who said he found no truth or greatness in it. Alexander Dumas, 1802-1870, left Paris in 1851, just before the empire, partly because of... After traveling to Belgium, Italy, and Russia, he returned to Paris in 1864 and wrote his last major work, The Night of St. Hermann, before he died in 1870. The son of Dumas, Alexander Dumas, fills 1824-1895, became the most successful playwright of the Second Empire. His 1852 drama The Lady of the Camellias ran for 100 performances and was adapted by Giuseppe Verdi into the opera La Traviata in 1853. After Victor Hugo, the most prominent writer of the Second Empire was Gustave Flaubert, 1821-1880. He published his first novel, Madame Bovary, in 1857, and followed it with Sentimental Education in Salambo in 1869. He and his publisher were charged with immorality for Madame Bovary. Both were acquitted, and the publicity from the trial helped make the novel a notable artistic and commercial success. The most important poet of the Second Empire was Charles Baudelaire, 1821-1867 who published Les Fleurs du Mal in 1860. He also ran into trouble with the censors and was charged with an offense to public morality. He was convicted and fined, and six poems were suppressed, but he appealed. The fine was reduced, and the suppressed poems eventually appeared. His work was attacked by the critic of Le Figaro, who complained that everything in it, which is not hideous, is incomprehensible, but Baudelaire's work and innovation had an enormous influence on the poets who followed him. The most prominent of the younger generation of writers in Paris was Emile Zola, 1840-1902. His first job in Paris was as a shipping clerk for the publisher Hachette, and later as the director of publicity for the firm. 
He published his first stories in 1864, his first novel in 1865, and had his first literary success in 1867 with his novel Therese Raquin. Another important writer of the time was Alphonse Daud at 1840-1897, who became private secretary to the half-brother and senior advisor of Napoleon Roman III. His book Letters de Montmoulin in 1866 became a French classic. One of the most popular writers of the Second Empire was Jules Verne 1828-1905, who lived on what is now Avenue Jules Verne. He worked at the Théâtre Lyrique and the Paris Stock Exchange, while he did research for his stories at the National Library. He wrote his first stories and novels in Paris, including Journey to the Center of the Earth. 1864, From the Earth to the Moon, 1864, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 1865. The Belle Epoque, 1871, 1913. During the Belle Epoque, Paris was the home and inspiration for some of France's most famous writers. Victor Hugo was 68 when he returned to Paris from Brussels in 1871 and took up residence on Avenue Dylau, now Avenue Victor Hugo, in the 16th arrondissement. He failed to be re elected to the National Assembly, but in 1876, he was elected to the French Senate. It was a difficult period for Hugo. His daughter Adele was placed in an insane asylum, and he, his longtime mistress, Juliet Drowett, died in 1883. When Hugo died May 28, 1885, at the age of 83, hundreds of thousands of Parisians lined the streets to pay tribute as his coffin was taken to the Pantheon on 1 June 1885. Amal Zola was born in Paris in 1840, the son of an Italian engineer. He was raised by his mother in aix en provence then returned to Paris in 1858 with his friend Paul Cézanne to attempt a literary career. He worked as a mailing clerk for the publisher Hachette and began attracting literary attention in 1865 with his novels in the new style of naturalism. He described in intimate details the workings of Paris department stores markets, apartment buildings, and other institutions, and the lives of the Parisians. By 1877, he had become famous and wealthy from his writing. He took a central role in the Dreyfus affair, helping win justice for Alfred Dreyfus, a French artillery officer of Alsatian Jewish background who had falsely been accused of treason. Guy de Maupassant, 1850-1893, moved to Paris in 1881 and worked as a clerk for the French Navy, then for the Ministry of Public Education, as he wrote short stories and novels at a furious pace. He became famous, but also became ill and depressed, then paranoid and suicidal, dying at the asylum of St. Esprit in Passy in 1893. Other writers who made a mark in the Paris literary world of the Third Republic's Belle Epoque included Anatole France, 1844-1924, Paul Claudel, 1868-1955, Alphonse, L.A., 1854-1905, the poet Guillaume Apollinaire, 1880-1918. Paris was also the home of one of the greatest Russian writers of the period, Ivan Turgenev. The Irish playwright Oscar Wilde spent his last months in Paris after his imprisonment in England and exile in other European cities. He wandered the streets alone, intoxicated and penniless. He died in the shabby Hotel d'Alsace, now called El Hotel, on the Rue des Beaux-Arts on the left bank, after pointing at the wallpaper and declaring one of us has got to go. The same hotel was later the residence of another writer in exile, George Louis Borges. Wilde was first buried in the cemetery of Bagneux outside the city. In 1909 his remains were transferred to Pierre Lachey's cemetery. Between the Wars, 1919-1939 Between the Wars, Paris was home to the major French publishing houses and literary journals, and of France's most important writers. Marcel Proust was living at 102 Boulevard Haussmann, editing his most important work, In Search of Lost Time, which he had begun in 1909, but was not finished by the time of his death in 1922. It was finally published in 1929. 
Anatole France won the Nobel Prize for Literature for his novels and poetry in 1921. The philosopher Henry Bergson won the Nobel Prize in 1927. Paris was the home of Colette, who lived in an apartment in the Palais Royal of novelist André Guide, of the playwright-author-filmmaker Jean Cocteau, of the philosopher and novelist Jean Paul Sartre, and his lifelong companion, Simone de Beauvoir. It was also home to a large community of expatriate writers from around the world. Ernest Hemingway, hired as a foreign correspondent for the Toronto Star, moved to Paris with his first wife Hadley in 1922 and made his first residence in a small upstairs apartment at 74 Rue du Cardinal Le Moyne. He remained until 1928, when he left with his second wife, Pauline. While there he wrote and published his first novel, the sun also rises. Others in the literary expatriate community included the poet Ezra Pound, the writer and art patron Gertrude Stein, and the English poet, critic novelist and editor Ford Maddox Ford. In 1920, the Irish author James Joyce received an invitation from the poet Ezra Pound to spend a week with him in Paris. He ended up remaining for twenty years, writing two of his major works, Ulysses and Finnegan's Wait. After the war began in late 1940, he moved to Zurich where he died. The Russian emigre Vladimir Nabokov lived in Paris from 1937 until 1940, when he left for the United States. Eric Arthur Blair, better known under his pen name George Orwell, lived in 1928 and 1929 on the Rue du Pot de Fer in the Fifth Arrondissement, where he worked as a dishwasher in a Paris restaurant, an experience he immortalized in Down and Out in Paris and London. An important meeting point for expatriate writers was the bookstore Shakespeare and Company, 1919-1941, first located at 8 Rue du Pitron from 1919 to 1922, and then from 1922 to 1941 at 12 Rue de Lodian. It was run by the American Sylvia Beach. Hemingway first met Ezra Pound here, and Beach published James Joyce's Ulysses, which was banned in Britain and the United States. 1946-2000 Existentialism and Expatriates The literary life of Paris after World War Roman II was also centered in St. Germain des Prix on the left bank, where there was a large concentration of bookstores and publishing houses. Because most writers lived in tiny rooms or apartments, they gathered in cafés, most famously the Café de Flore, the Brasserie Lip and Les Dukes Maggots, where the philosopher Jean Paul Sartre and writer Simone de Beauvoir held court. Sartre 1905-1980 was the most prominent figure of the period. He was a philosopher, the founder of the School of Existentialism, but also a novelist, playwright, and theater director. He also was very involved in the Paris politics of the left. After the war, he was a follower though not a member of the Communist Party, then broke with the Communists after the Soviet invasion of Hungary, and became an admirer of Fidel Castro and the Cuban Revolution, then of Mao Tse-Tung. In 1968 he joined the demonstrations against the government, standing on a barrel to address striking workers at the Renault factory in Billancourt. The legends of St. Germain des Prix describe him of frequenting the jazz clubs of the neighborhood, but Sartre wrote that he rarely visited them, finding them too crowded, uncomfortable, and loud. Simone de Beauvoir, 1902-1986, the lifelong companion of Sartre, was another important literary figure, both as an early proponent of feminism and as an autobiographer and novelist. Other major literary figures in Paris during the period included Albert Camus, 1913-1960, like Sartre, a writer and novelist of the left but a vocal critic of Stalinism, André Malois, Francois Mauriac, André Malraux, and Marcel Pagnol. A new literary movement emerged in Paris in the 1950s, known as the Nouveau Roman, the New Novel, the Anti-Novel, or Anti-Romanticism. Important new writers who emerged in Paris in the 1950s and 1960s included Alain Rob Grillet, Marguerite Duras, Nathalie Sarrot, Claude Mauriac, Mitchell Buter, 
Claude Simon, Henry Troyet, Maurice Duan, Marguerite Yourcenar, and Mitchell Turnier. Paris was also home for many notable international writers, including the African-American writers James Baldwin, Chester Himes, and Richard Wright, who found the city more welcoming than the U.S. in the early 1950s. The 21st Century Several writers resident in Paris have distinguished themselves in world literature in the 21st century. Gao Xinjian, born in China in 1940, left his homeland in the 1980s after writing works which displeased the Chinese government. In France he became a prominent writer, playwright, and was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2000. Other prominent Parisian writers include Patrick Modino, the winner of the 2014 Nobel Prize for Literature, who was born in 1945 in the Paris suburb of boulogne billancourt and studied and made his literary career in Paris. Jean Dormesson, the senior member of the Académie Francaise, was born in 1925. He is author of a long series of acclaimed autobiographical or partially autobiographical novels.